Welcome to our screencast lesson on the, actually our screencast solutions for homework number five, working with mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage as well. So part one was to uh, create a set of notes based upon uh, the textbook, pages 113 to 119, and as, as well, hopefully you've watched the screencast lesson. I think the screencast lesson does a pretty good job of approaching all of these questions or statements and you should have hopefully a decent understanding of each of them and I think it'll be a good thing for us to talk a little bit directly about um, in class next week. So that's why I've left this page blank. So if you watch the screencast lesson and you do the text uh, reading, which I recommend you do both, um, I think you'll have a solid understanding of mechanical advantage, ideal mechanical advantage, um, and those other terms there. <clears throat> if not, we'll talk about it in class. Okay, so let's get to the problems. Um, so you, what you'll notice what I do in these packets now is that I, I'll, I will never abandon the old work. So we'll keep picking off or keep um, popping in you know, a weight problem or a work problem and, <laughs> and then now also mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage problems. So we'll just keep building. So you have to be able to recognize now. That's why GRASP is really a good method to use. You have to recognize based upon the givens and what you're solving for, and then select what formula to use. So you can see here it says, what is the mass of an object found on Jupiter if it has a weight of 5,600? I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Hopefully you noticed that it should be 56,803 newtons. And I even carried the mistake on there, but then I caught it eventually. Hopefully you did too. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, talking about the gravity, the forces of gravity, I don't expect you to have to look these up on the internet. So all these documents have provided you with this reference page. So here are all the gravitational constants or the force of gravity uh, for these, at least this set of planets right here. And so we plug that in. So that is a given in the problem. So I've been noticing some people not writing that down. So the givens in this problem are the weight of the object, weight of 56,803 newtons, and the force of gravity on Jupiter, 22.8 newtons per kilogram. What are we solving for? In this case, we're solving for mass. So what formula will we use? Weight equals mass times gravity. Even though we're not solving for weight, that's the only formula we have that has mass, weight, and gravity in it. Put in our values, 56,803 newtons equals mass times 22.8 newtons per kilogram. You know from our algebra skills, we're going to have to divide both sides by 22.8 newtons per kilogram. The newtons cancel out nicely, leaving us with kilograms, which is the units we want because mass is always in kilograms or grams. And then we rephrase it, <clears throat> the mass, the object's mass is 2,491.36 kilograms. And you could have just rounded that to 2,491 kilograms as well. Problem two, how much energy is required to move a 3,000 gram rock 2,000 decimeters using a force of 1.5 newtons? So a couple of things with this problem. Uh, recognize that energy and work are the same thing. So when we say how much energy, we could also be saying how much work is required. Big clue there. Um, we've been given the mass of the rock, may or may not be helpful. And we've been given a distance, but we need to note um, that the distance is not in meters. So what are we looking? Well, what do we need? What do we have for known? So we know the mass of the rock. We know the distance. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to meters. So I, again, I can go to the reference page way back here. Decimeters, here's a decimeter. Decimeters are a tenth of a meter, so that should be helpful when making that conversion. So 2,000 decimeters, uh, 2,000 decimeters divided by 10 decimeters per meter tells me that I have 200 meters, and I have this force of 1.5 newtons. And how much energy or work? So work, I'm saying work and energy are interchangeable. So how much work is or energy is required uh, for this system. So it looks like the mass, we won't need the mass because our formula is work equals force times distance. So work equals 1.5 newtons, the force, times the distance converted in meters. Remember it has to be in meters because the joule is actually a representation of the units newton meters, newton times meters, so it has to be in meters. 1.5 times 200 is 300 newton meters or 300 joules. So 300 joules of energy is required to move the rock 2,000 decimeters. Okay, so now we finally get to some mechanical advantage problems. <clears throat> so how much mechanical advantage does a lever produce if 20 newtons of force is applied to the lever and it produces 80 newtons of force? So our givens are the force in, so it's applied to, um, that, <laughs> that means it's the force going into the lever, into the system, so that's our force in. And the lever produces, or therefore the force out, is 80 newtons. It says mechanical advantage, how much? So we're going to solve for MA. What's our mechanical advantage? Look up the formula. Mechanical advantage equals force out divided by force in. 
plug in our values, mechanical advantage equals 80 newtons divided by 20 newtons, noodles can newtons, <laughs> noodles, newtons cancel out, 80 divided by 20 is 4. So the lever gains us a mechanical advantage of 4. In other words, when you use that lever, you multiply the force you're using 4 times. You become 4 times stronger. How, how much mechanical advantage does a ramp produce if 136 newtons of force are applied to the ramp and it produces 544 newtons of force? So reading carefully, applied means the force going in, so the force in is 136 newtons. It produces, or we get out, the force out, 544 newtons. And again, we're solving for mechanical advantage. MA equals question mark. MA equals force out divided by force in. Mechanical advantage equals 544 newtons, the force out, divided by 136 newtons, the force in. Again, newtons cancel out. And lo and behold, again, we gained a mechanical advantage of four. We multiplied our strength four times, our force four times. Okay, now we're going to move on to an IMA problem, ideal mechanical advantage. Remember, ideal means a situation where we're going to pretend like there's no friction. So what is the IMA of, of, of a hammer if it is moved 60 centimeters when prying up a nail? The nail was moved 30 millimeters. So our givens are the distance in. So the hammer, if you're the thing that you're using, the thing that the person is applying force to is where the distance in is. So the hammer is moved 60 centimeters, so that's the distance in. And then thing, the place where the force comes out, the where the work was done, if you will, where the nail moved, that's the distance out. Now the little trick here is we have centimeters and millimeters, and that's fine, except if we're going to divide these values eventually, they have to have the same units. You can't divide centimeters by millimeters. So we have to convert one to the other. So let's convert our 30 millimeters to centimeters because we know that there's 10 millimeters in every centimeter. So 30 millimeters equals three centimeters. What are we solving for? IMA, IMA our formula, ideal mechanical advantage equals distance in divided by distance out. So IMA equals 60 centimeters divided by three centimeters. Again, units cancel out. It's a ratio, it has no units. It's basically a rate, and in this case, ideal mechanical advantage of the hammer is 20. In other words, the hammer multiplies the force 20 times. You're 20 times stronger using that hammer. What is the IMA of a hockey stick if the input force is applied over a distance of 20 centimeters and the output distance is 80 centimeters? So pretty straightforward here telling you the distance in where the force is applied, the distance in is 20 centimeters, output distance is 80 centimeters, no units to worry about. IMA equals question mark, IMA equals distance in divided by distance out, IMA equals the distance in 20 centimeters divided by 80 centimeters. Again, our units cancel out, 20 divided by 80 is 1 fourth, so the hockey stick has an IMA of 1 quarter. So in fact, 1 fourth of, your, of the force is remaining at the output um, despite putting in a, an amount of energy. So if you put in 20 newtons of energy, a force, you only get out uh, 5 newtons of energy. But remember, that means it's a third class lever. We'll talk a little bit more about those. Um, and the advantage of third class levers is not the increase in force, but the increase in velocity at the output force, where the force is produced. Number seven, calculate the mechanical advantage of a car jack that uses an input force of 30 newtons and provides an output force of 600 newtons. Okay, so pretty straightforward mechanical advantage problem, force in. 30 newtons, force out, 60 newtons, MA equals question mark, MA equals force out divided by force in. So the MA is 60 newtons divided by 30 newtons, newtons cancel out, the tens value cancels out, 60 divided by 3 is 20. So the car jack multiplies your force by 20. You're 20 times stronger. Finally, oh, a throwback problem. What is the weight of a 123,000 gram spacecraft that has landed on the surface of Mars? Okay, so obviously we're using we're going to be using our weight formula here. So mass is in grams, so that's got to be converted to kilograms. We can the weight formula only works with the mass in kilograms. So 123,000 grams. Since there's a thousand grams per kilogram, we divide by 1,000 and that converts it to 123 kilograms. The gravity on Mars. Look it up on the reference page. 3.2 newtons per kilogram. Weight equals we don't know. Formula weight equals mass times gravity. So it's 123 kilograms times 3.2 newtons per kilogram. And again, I'm just I'm doing this just to show you if you keep the units in the problem, in the algebra, they will help you to solve it correctly. You'll know you're doing the problem correctly if you end up with the correct units. So you can see here kilograms divided by kilograms cancel out. We're left with newtons. That's what we want because newtons are the units for weight. So on Mars, the object would have a weight of 393.6 newtons.